you're tapped into your source for fantasy hockey news and all of the latest updates from around the world of the NHL. Connor Bedard on the shelf. Linus Allmark injury updates, of course, all of the top fantasy young gun countdown continuation that you're looking for. Seven through five, Thursday's big time bets. Thank you for joining us. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hockey heads, degenerate gamblers, and of course, fantasy fanatics stand up and tap in. It's your show. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, and we are here for a jam-packed Thursday edition, one in which we have all of the latest updates that you need that's impacting your fantasy squad. Shout out to all of our everydayers, and thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat over 50 infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. Use code locked on to get 20 bucks off your order. That's J A S E medical.com. My friends. You are joining us for an extra special episode, not only because Steele and I are probably going to disagree on a number of our young guns on the countdown. I can't wait for that. But Connor Bedard, we're going to talk about it very quickly, Steele. There's not a whole lot of takeaways other than this just sucks for the NHL. We know it hurts uh, a lot of NHL fantasy GMs, but this just sucks with the All-Star game coming up. We'll talk about it quickly. Linus Allmark, clearly the confidence and key to success for this Boston team is their goaltending. I don't really know if losing Linus Allmark is going to hurt them all that much. We'll talk about it. Jeremy Swayman going to be stepping in our top fantasy young gun countdown players that have only played 100 games or less in the NHL. That steal and I are absolutely loving on the come up Thursday's big time bets. My friend, over to you because I know we got to save some time for the upcoming disagreement, I'm sure, on our <laughs> countdown. But Bedard, we now know six to eight weeks. And I have a take here because if it is eight weeks, we're going to have to start looking at the schedule here, Steele. And people at a fantasy GMs who own Bedard are going to be running out of time. I don't know. In the certain format, you might be looking at potentially dropping this player. What's your take on this? Yeah, if he's out, well, regardless, six to eight weeks is a long time. That's a month and a half or two months if he goes the goes the full eight weeks. And again, like you said, we're getting down to the wire here in a few of the leagues that are a little bit shortened. And right. Connor Bedard has been an absolute special player for fantasy GMs out there who drafted them. Obviously, keeper leagues, you're probably grabbing him first. If you're in a, just a year-to-year league, you're probably grabbing him in the second round, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, maybe even later than that. But again, like he's one of the stars and he's going to be a star for so many decades. Um Losing him for six to eight weeks is going to be absolutely terrible. Maybe yeah. maybe someone who has Connor Bedard is still at top of their league and it's not mm-hmm. going to be that uh, negative, uh, put a negative impact yep. on their team. You know, they're going to still have to pick up somebody for the time being. And that's something we mention every Monday, waiver wire targets. But what I'm very curious about is who's going to take Connor Bedard's spot at the All-Star game? Like, mm. like is it going to be wow. Nick Foligno of all people, Philip Kurashev, Jason Dickinson? Like, this Oof. is the problem with the All-Star format right now and how True. it works with just getting a person and a player from every single team. It's best on best. It's the All-Star game. There, it's it's called the All Star Game should for be, a reason. Yeah. They should all be stars, and I don't know who they're going to get from the Chicago Blackhawks now, but it's not going to be a star. Look, Steele, this is one of those situations that we've covered at length. We don't really need to talk too much about what is going to happen to the Chicago Blackhawks because it really doesn't matter, does it? But six to eight weeks now, we have a clear timeline on how long Bedard is going to be out and how long fantasy GMs are going to have to juggle. And what I was getting at with the timeline is, let's say it is eight weeks and he comes back. Not only are the Chicago Blackhawks going to be so far out of it, that it's going to be hard to get any kind of mojo going for that team to win games. And I know anything can happen, but realistically, you're the Chicago Blackhawks. You're not rushing this player back in any capacity whatsoever. Yeah. So that's something that factors into whether you look, if you have an IR slot, of course, put them there. But if you don't 
and you have to maybe juggle some pieces that are going to come back faster or maybe come back in a better situation, you're going to have to make some tough decisions here. And I know dropping Connor Bedard sounds bold, but if it's a year to year league and he's going to be back out there next year for you, of course, consider it. No one's dropping him in the keeper dynasty realm. We are not idiots on this show. Steel as much <laughs> as some people out there might think we are. But that's the takeaway with Connor Bedard. Six to eight weeks, you're going to have to get creative if you don't have an open IR spot and seriously consider potentially dropping him onto Linus Allmark, though, Steele, if you don't mind, because the bane of our existence, perhaps, has been over the last two seasons <laughs> predicting the downfall of this Boston Bruins team, and they continue to come out and do historic things, which is by far the most annoying thing going on, but there's good reason for it. Not only do they have their pillars up front, Pasternak, Marshawn, Mar McAvoy, whatever, Linus Allmark and uh, Jeremy Swayman are the keys to this team's success. So Allmark goes out. He is not skating. He is not putting pressure on it. I don't know if you saw the clip. I am not going to speculate, but you could hear it in the voices of the broadcasters on the Boston Bruins side. It's not pretty, and I have a feeling, no speculation, Jeremy Swayman is going to be the guy getting that run out for at least the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it didn't look good at all. It, it honestly looked like one of those ancient torture torture devices where he Ooh. was strapped from all four limbs and somebody pulled him. Like it didn't <laughs> look good at all. Like, Ooh, I like that. He, he went down right away. And I, I gotta say this in the in the competitive listener league that we've got going on, mm. I am absolutely screwed if he is out for longer than a week, which it seems like he might be, because there's not many goalies on the waiver wire right now. Peter Mrazek, Ilya no. Samsonov. Uh, yeah. A couple of uh, Monty Ronta, like just goalies you can't grab. And Holy that's graveyard. Def that's definitely a rule that we're going to be implementing next season in the fantasy league is a maximum two goalies per team. Yeah. There's some teams out there in, the, in, in our, in our league right now who have four, even five goaltenders on their roster. So there's nobody on the waiver wire target for goaltenders right now in, in this one fantasy league. But yeah. I will mention this. I did just pick up Jesper Wallstead of the Minnesota Wild uh -oh. making his NHL debut yes. tonight. I love or it. I guess last night against the uh, Dallas Stars. So yep. that could be something to keep an eye on for uh, the Minnesota Wild and this young goaltender like for them. Uh, he's been very solid throughout his NHL career. Uh, sorry, he's been very solid throughout his AHL career yes. with the uh, Iowa Wild right now. So I like what he's done so far this current season. And we'll talk a little bit about the Minnesota Wild when we get to the Young Guns. I'm sure we will because say what you will about the Minnesota Wild this season, a lot of good young pieces. Shout out yes. to my boy Billy G in that front office. 11-3-6 <laughs> and six this season, Jeremy Swayman. Two shutties, 2.50 goals against, and a 9.20 save percentage. This is a goaltender at 109 games in the NHL regular season, which is not a ton, but it's enough that I like to read into the numbers a little bit, right? It's not like 20 or 30. Yeah, He has a 920 save percentage. This is what this guy does. So, again, the Boston Bruins, by some voodoo pact with the devil, have all the good goaltenders in the NHL stacked up. But if you're one of those GMs that did stack up a number of goaltenders and perhaps stashed Jeremy Swayman, now you have a number of intriguing options on your hand. Not only can you ride him out and maybe swap him in for a goaltender that you have that is currently going cold, you could also have that benefit of maybe selling him high right now, bringing in a piece or two and taking your team over the top. Those are the angles that Steele and I will continue to break down all week long, Monday through Friday. You know we're here for y'all, but we're going to continue our countdown of the top fantasy young guns. Right around the break, we're going to keep it tight. Seven through five, Thursdays, full betting breakdown. But today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. We come on here to talk sports and escape from the craziness that realities of real life brings us. But we got to talk just for a minute about preparing for real life. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. This is scary, people. Not just like my fantasy team right now. This is real. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if Steel or any of my sisters got sick or maybe someone needed some kind of medicine and a supply chain issue kept them from getting their life 
life-saving meds that they needed. Thankfully, we're all going to be Gucci because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It'll be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on to get 20 bucks off your order. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you go over to YouTube and check out Locked On Sports today because they have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Locked On Sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. So go to go to the YouTube channel of Locked On Sports today and make sure you subscribe to the first ever 24-7 streaming channel. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Continue to hit the subscribe, leave a follow, and a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us. Continue leaving the comments on the YouTube channel. Give us any ideas that you want us to talk about, yeah. any topics. If you have any trades that have gone down in your league that you mm-hmm. want us to mention on here that we can debate about, mention it on the YouTube channel or DM us on Twitter as well. Let's get down to the 765 hey. on the Young Guns list here. I'll kick us off because it's a player we talked about. Matthew Nyes comes in at number seven for me. 16 points in 39 career games. He's only been playing 14 and a half minutes of average ice time this season, even though he has been going back and forth from the first and second line, he's still under 15 minutes. So I think that's pretty solid right now for this young forward. Mm. 15.4 shooting percentage is absolutely fantastic. He's a pretty big lad too at 21 years old, 6'3", 210 pounds, and could possibly become a banger league beauty. Has 63 hits and 23 penalty minutes on the year. If he Mm. continues to develop his game, get a little bit stronger, bigger, He'll become more physical, but I want to talk about the pure skill this guy has. Unbelievable stick handling ability, quick feet, fast skater. I was watching some of his Big Ten highlights at University of Minnesota. Shout out Minnie over there. It's truly mesmerizing what he can do with this, uh, when he skates and, uh, when he gets uh, when he has the puck on his stick so okay. he can get through defenders real quickly he gets he gets uh he gets there to the net digs for the rebounds mm. he's not a star yet but he's a star in the making for the toronto maple leafs if he continues playing this way first of all shout out to you for the shout out to minnesota shout out to you for mesmerized because i'm feeling the same <laughs> right now I'll just get it out of the way. He was an honorable mention for me. And now thinking about it, Steele, I'll give your credit due because there is a lot of players on our list that are young. They have a lot of upside. Yes. Matthew Nyes has actually done something that a lot of these players haven't. And he's performed in the postseason. So I guess I just want to give you your flowers because (laughs) he should have probably slotted in on my 10th or maybe ninth spot because I am solid with mine. I went back to the table after you and I had a little chat today and Matt Nyes is, was injured in practice, but he should be okay. I just looked at these players who, cause lately Matthew Nyes has not been affecting the game yeah, and that's just a fact, but the upside, the skill and his ability to get it done in the postseason, I overlooked and I'll give him that credit as well. But, This guy at number, what are we at? Seven. Seven. I got to just stick to my guns. Thomas Harley is eating major minutes for a good Dallas team. And if you're not buying into my take on it, buy into the coaching staff in Dallas, believing in this player. He is now up to over 24 minutes in ice time per night. And that wasn't just once. 22 minutes, 21, 24, 23, 24. This is a player that is a really, really good young defenseman on the rise steal. He makes some mistakes. He jumps in the rush a little bit too much. He maybe gets a little bit too physical at times in a bad way. Six foot three. He likes to block shots. He gets a penalty minute or two. We know he can bring the offense. He's playing good right now as well. 19 points. He is the 18th overall draft pick. I've talked about him a lot. He's on my list. You know, he had to be. That's number seven. I also think. In fantasy, getting guys that can do a little bit of everything comes few and far between. Very true. Very true. Thomas Harley was on my list yesterday, but after our conversation, I had to bounce Uh him out of there. I had to put someone else in after our conversation. So you're going to be very excited and happy about who I have there. It was it was tough for me. I have three. I now have three Minnesota Wild players on this, <laughs> on this, but I'll get to two of them very very soon. But at number six for me, 
I'm going to the Calgary Flames. Connor Zary has been tearing it up yes. recently as well. This player, uh, this is a player the league and the fans need to keep on notice right like now. It. Absolutely tore up the WHL from 2018 to 2020. He's got 21 points in 31 games this year. Had two points in that dominating performance against the Ottawa Senators. 6-3 <laughs> win for the Calgary Flames. Got to mention that every time I can. And he is lethal absolutely lethal when he gets in tight in front of that in front of that blue paint in the offensive zone he's got a nice release nice little wrist shot and snapshot on the kid laser focus stick always ready on the ice ready for that pass from his teammates he can pick corners as well he can like if there's no room he can still find room it's unbelievable shooting at 23 percent in his rookie season right now and what i just want to continue and what i want to say to zary right now is just continue Mm. shooting the puck only 56 shots on net i know you're a rookie in the calgary flames uh, dressing room right now on their uh, on their roster but come on man shoot the puck you got 23 percent shooting percentage right now you're scoring goals left right and center and the yeah. Calgary Flames need goals if you've got that shot in the arsenal continue shooting the puck and keep it keep your eyes uh, on Connor Zary moving forward because I've been very impressed with his game totally agree love this take and I can't help but feel maybe a little bit what's going on with the Calgary Flames inability to find an identity different coaches different styles of play you know stars struggling there's been a lot of reasons for perhaps a young player like maybe if he was in a lot better of a situation up front the Calgary Flames have been a bit of a mess and I know they're getting wins I know they've been playing better at times that's just where I look at Connor Zary because if he's already doing this with the opportunity he's getting with the struggling flames, quote unquote, I'm really excited at what the future holds for this player because the upside, the ceiling is quite high. Are you okay if I fire off my number oh, six. seven? Number six. Okay, I'm on number six. He'll <laughs> hold me down. There are two goalies that have actually three to round out my list. So I have three total here in the top. It's got to be Joseph Wall. He's got to be on this list. Again, you and I have done pretty good, I think, of this list of maybe not being exactly the same, but covering a number of good names. Yeah. Eight, five, and one this year is not indicative of how good Joseph Wall has actually been because he was hung out to dry and actually come in to save Ilya Samsonov in a number of these situations. My favorite part of Joseph Wall, aside from his stellar numbers in a small sample size, let's be real. 26 regular season games. He did look good in his little limited postseason showing. Yep. It's his ability to remain confident, unflappable. Some of those games where he was seeing rubber aggressively, he doesn't get rattled. I love that moxie. I love his confidence. That's something you can't teach. And that's something that this Toronto Maple Leafs team has been lacking in a goaltender for a long, long time. That big save ability, you get pumped by a couple of bad ones, you make 10 straight saves. I think that's what Joseph Hall has. He deserves to be on this list for sure. And I love his moxie. The injury came at a really, really tough time. Let's see what he can do if he bounces back because he's also going to come in and get fed to the wolves at the meat grinder time of the schedule. Look, I know Martin Jones has been pretty spectacular the last five games, but I am really excited for Joseph Wall to come back. And yeah, I don't sure. know what the timetable is uh, for his return. Uh, I know they just brought up Ilya Samsonov from the Toronto Marlies as well. Mm-hmm. So maybe he gets another go at it once again for the, for the Maple Leafs and see what he can do. But I, I can't be more excited for Joseph Wall. And I really love the variety of players that we've got on this top 10 list, yeah. actually. I, I, I cheated a little bit at number five again. I've got two players okay. at number five, but that's because they come from the same team. I oh, here we go. One. Marco Rossi and Brock Faber. I've talked about them at length so many times the last two weeks. It seems like ninth mm. overall pick and 45th overall pick in the 2020 draft. I'm not even going to look at Rossi's first 21 games in the NHL because it was just an embarrassment. One point in 21 games is just absolutely brutal. So I'm going to look at his full season this year right now. 12 goals, 24 points in 39 games for Rossi, 19 points for Faber. I think both these players are going to be a very vital and key mm. uh, key for Minnesota's future, going to be key parts, especially on the power play right now, a very below average team, a very below average special teams unit, but they're still young. They're still going to figure it out and they're going to get more reps in that first power play unit. But just looking at, like you mentioned, some of these young guys and prospects that they've got on the roster coming up right now, Matt Boldy, Kaprizov, Joel Erickson, Eck, Gustafson, Wallstead, Rossi, Faber, all of those players mm-hmm. I just mentioned are 26 years old or younger. So they're just all warming up right now as Kirill Kaprizov leads the way for them. And like you said, 
our boy Billy G. Let it let him do his thing. Make some trades. Right? Get some players over to Minnesota. Make Minnesota a go-to destination for high-level mm. hockey players who want to compete. Minnesota is a great place to play hockey. It's just really trying to get players and talented athletes to come over there and sign long uh, sign long term right now. Sure. But I love what they've got going on with some of these young players and some of these young guys, uh, you know, on the Iowa Wild as well. Mm. Uh, but Marco Rossi, Brock Faber, you got to keep an eye on them for sure moving forward. Flip's got one more player. Then we're going to get over to big time bets. But first, this episode is also brought to you by, excuse me, this today's episode is also brought to you by the Sleeper app. It's almost halfway point in the season, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are inching closer and closer to the to, to the uh, top spot in the Atlantic Division. Regardless of where we are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, and especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests, but it's not just hockey. You can also play daily fantasy NFL, NBA, MLB, CFB on the Sleeper app. They've got the group chat, team chat functionality. Flip and I are always in there chatting with other fans. Entries can be made in under a minute. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Matthews, Marner, McDavid, Ovechkin, Crosby, or even Hellebuck, if they'll record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. To win a hundred bet on sleeper, you need to you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me locked on fantasy hockey fans. You can win a hundred times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning. Big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and location availability. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe, leave a follow button, and a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. We're going to get to big-time bets. Thursday's big betting board coming up soon. But Flip, number five on your list. Yeah, number five on your list. Who is it? Is it number five still? Because I don't even know, but I hope it is because... (laughs) Look, you already covered it. Brock Faber's got to be on this list. And I think we mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. He's a dark horse for the Calder Trophy. Now with Bedard out six to eight weeks, this is where I'd be sniffing around that future. Hey, your Fantilli on. bet's looking pretty good at Bedard. Hey, though, now, <laughs> some of my crazy early... No, let's not go down that path. But anyway, Brock Faber, upside through the roof. He can do a little bit of everything and bring the offensive upside This is the kind of player, again, guys, keeper dynasty. He is already a borderline keeper because defensemen that can do what he does, which, again, is a little bit of everything, fill out the peripherals a little bit as well. I'd like to see him actually, speaking of which, I know 60 shots on net is pretty good. I think as the confidence come and he fits into his NHL game a little bit more, I see the shots going way, way up. 73 block shots, 27 hits, 12 penalty minutes. So much to like about Brock Faber's game. And if you're not believing me, once again, believe in our boy, Billy G. <laughs> That's it, Steele. That's all I got to say because you covered it nicely. Although I'm ready to pop off with my bets if you're ready. Yeah, let's do it. Three picks for Thursday night's betting board. Start us off there, big guy. Giddy up because the Boston Bruins are on the back end of a tough roadie. They are 7-2-1 and one against the Vegas Golden Knights. And I was ready to hammer the Boston Bruins against the Knights, but I actually wanted to dig into it a little bit more because a good team on the Vegas side struggling. Boston at the back end of a roadie with Lin- Linus Allmark going out, Swayman in, and then you look at it even more, and seven of their last nine head-to-head have gone under the number My first pick is under six and a half between these two teams, even though Boston has the tendency to score in bunches when I count them out. I don't think that's going to happen in this situation. I really, really like the under at six and a half. If it does drop down, don't be afraid to tease it up. I'm loving teasers these days. If you don't have a big amount of money, put a bunch of teasers on there, slap it down on a parlay and thank us later. But that's my first one steal under six and a half in that Bruins Knights. Love the pick. Guess what as well? Aiden Hill is back in the lineup. He's playing 
Uh, he played yesterday night against the Colorado Avalanche, so I believe Logan Thompson will be in the crease in okay. that game against the Boston. Still Bruins, like it. But gotta get gotta get happy about Aiden Hill back in the lineup as Vegas has struggled without him a little bit. My first pick: Panthers on the puck line plus 172 mm. uh, against the LA Kings. If you look at it head to head matchups between these two teams, yeah. it doesn't go in favor of the Panthers. Kings have won the last six contests between Correct. these two teams, but. As of right now, as of the last 10 games, mm. the Kings have been sliding three, four, and three in their last 10 games. While on the other hand, the Panthers are surging with full force right now, eight, two, and oh, in their last yeah. 10. They're currently on an eight game winning streak. And in their last five games, they've won by three or more goals every single time in their last five. So I love mm. this look. Panthers at home, puck line plus 172. Absolutely yep. hammer that one down. Absolutely. The Panthers, look, we've covered this. Shout out to Carter Verhage, good Niagara Ice Dog, also playing very well. Sam Reinhart, red hot. Let me just wrap this up quick, Steel, because my second pick and my lock of the night come from the Edmonton Oilers into the Detroit Red Wings. Red Wings, three straight wins. However, excuse me, those were San Jose, LA, and Anaheim. So take it with a grain of salt. I'm going to the total here. Excuse me again, because the last three games between these two have gone over the number with ease. I'm loving that one over six and a half. Two teams feeling it. Two teams that have obviously had their goaltending issues. We're not going to get into that either. Over feels like the wave here. And of course, I don't know if you saw Connor McDavid's comments about the reviews. Yeah, <laughs> of course he is right, but he is P.O.'d. Uh... And I'm just going to go with this angle right now. They squeaked one out against the Chicago Blackhawks. That's not going to be good enough for Connor McDavid. And he is on an impressive heater right now. I don't know what kind of game streak he is on, but it's a good one. And in his career against the Detroit Red Wings, in 13 regular season games, 17 career regular season points. McDavid over one and a half anytime points. Lock of the night. Absolutely love. What was the second pick there in this game? Second pick, Edmonton, Detroit, over six and a half as well. Yeah, you know what? I, I like the McDavid over one and a half points because that's what I had the other night as well. It didn't pan out, like you said, a kind of a, a weird game against mm. the Blackhawks, only 2-1 win for the Oilers. I stayed yeah. away from this matchup just looking at the numbers. It was dead even, 50-50 in wins, dead even, 50-50 yes. in over-under. So I, I, if, if I was going to do one, that's the way I would have gone over Thank six you. and a half as well. So I do like the pick. I like the McDavid over one and a half points. Boom. My final two picks, Jets puck line against the Chicago Blackhawks, minus 144 right have now. The, the, the Jets have, have won to. eight out of their last 10 matchups against the Blackhawks. All eight times they won, it was by two or more goals. So I'm taking the Jets Love. puck line at minus 144. Final mm. pick of the night. This one's more of a gut feeling, just also the way the Canucks are playing right now. But I'm going to take the Canucks money line against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They haven't won in Pittsburgh since 2018. I mm. believe that's going to change tonight. Vancouver's firing JT Miller, my boy. Elias mm. Pedersen. He is your Quinn boy. Quinn Hughes getting it done. Those are my three picks with the lock of the night. The Panthers puck line minus uh, plus 172. Love it. Penguins playing better hockey. I believe the Vancouver Canucks are on a roadie as well. But yeah. I think you're getting plus money there. We're obviously slacking on this graphic. Might as well throw it up for, uh, you know, good omen's sake here. But still, I'm liking these picks. This is one of those situations that I like doing a first glance, putting down like my favorite three or four picks and then pairing that back to down to like a two or three teamer. That's usually how I get that loot on parlays. Might have to do that with your picks as well. Big Thursday on tap. Join us tomorrow. Friday's episode going to be fire. Let's get the three leg parlays going on Thursday night. Thank you so much for making the locked on fantasy hockey podcast. Your first listen every single day. And once again, go to YouTube, check out locked on sports today. They've launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. It's been up for over a month now. Make sure you go to check out, subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. They're here for you every single day, any time of the day, whenever you want to listen, check it out. Thank you again so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day out there. Good luck with all your bets tonight, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.